Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure to be here to talk to you and give you an update on Faraday Copper. Oh, uh, cautionary statement, we'll be making some forward-looking um, chat here, so uh, just draw your attention to the customary state. Okay, so Faraday Copper, what do we have? We have one of the largest undeveloped copper resources in the United States that's still in the hands of Virginia, and it's still growing. We also have significant exploration upside, a lot of untested surface breaches which we're drilling on, and we've made some significant discoveries so far this year as we continue to drill. Um, and then, you know, we're doing, along with that, all of the study work. You know, in May 23 last year, we put out a, a mineral resource update as well as a, an initial PEA, which envisaged a 30-year mine life, 10 years of open pit, 20 years of underground, with a 30,000 tonne per day production. And so we're looking at updating that um, as we go into next year on, on the back of the new drilling and study work. You know, we're currently fully funded. We did a financing in May last year, and that will allow us to complete all of our catalysts over the next 12 to 18 months and take us through to the end of, of next year. The main catalyst we've got, we're, we're embarking on a, or midway through a 20,000 meter drill program as we speak. And then, as I say, we've got a mineral resource and technical study to come next year. So where do we locate? We're in southern Arizona, right in the heart of copper country. You know, I think a lot of exciting developments happening in, in Arizona at the moment. Um, you know, we, we saw in the last couple of weeks that both Hud Bay and South 32 have received permits um, for their projects. Um, Tosico uh, received their permit and are busy constructing the Florence project. You know, as well, we've got Arizona Snore and Ivanhoe Electric advancing there projects as well. You know, we, we're blessed with great infrastructure. We've got a highway that runs past the project. There's an active rail line down into, um, into San Manuel. Uh, we're right next door to, on our, our land package is, uh, connects with BHP's old San Manuel mine. Um, that was the first block cave in the US mined at 45 to 60,000 tons per day. Uh, closed in 2000 when prevailing copper prices were low but the Kalamazoo ore body, um, which didn't get mined, um, 800 million tons at 0.8% copper. And earlier this year, um, BHP took it out of their legacy group, and it's now with their exploration and corporate development group to look at ways of our unlocking value from that project. Um, there's also a new power project underway. It's um, an $8.8 .8 billion federally funded project called Sunzir that's bringing renewable energy from New Mexico in the form of uh, wind and uh, solar through Arizona and into California. So that's running right by the project. And then also recently, Osaka announced that they're looking at, at bringing um, the Hayden smelter back online, which is um, just 20 miles up the road, so a potential source of concentrate from, from Copper Creek. So we are now officially a Lundin Group company. They're sort of 19.9% .9 holder through their, through their trusts. We've also got uh, Murray Edwards and, and Pierre Lasson. So collectively, they own over 30% of the company. So great backers, long-term investors in, in the industry. And as I mentioned, you know, we did that $23 million raise in February, which was timely, consider, you know, it was the top of the market in the copper price, so well funded through next year. So we have two styles of mineralization on this project. We have these breccia pipes that are exposed at surface. They have high grade cores, they're more than a percent copper, and then they have a lower grade envelope around them. And these are what could be mined by open pit methods. And then at depth, we have the porphyry mineralization, which is a series of stacked veins carrying charcoal pyrite and bornite that are hosted within the porphyry. And what we do see is that there's um, the most complete mineral system we have defined to date is the mammoth breccia into the keel porphyry system, just over one kilometer of continual mineralization. Um, and then what's interesting is that the, the breccias of globe, copper prints, old old reliable charge ad wrinkle, for instance, haven't been drill tested at depth. So our thesis is that these are open, we've done more drilling. As we drill deeper, there's a potential for porphyry mineralization at depth. Um, we're currently drilling in this gap here above American Eagle. 
So previous drilling drilled vertical holes to drill out the, their sub-horizontal veins hosted within within the porphyry there. So they didn't test the, the breaches that are exposed at surface. Um, they were they drilled sort of outside of those, and that's what we're drilling and have made some significant discoveries over the last few weeks. Um, also, when we did the resource, a number of these open pits were limited on data, and so we've drill tested below those, and these are some of the, the results from that phase of drilling. It was a 10,000 meter program last year, and so locally we also get these uh, massive sulfide zones within the breaches, and this is where we started to see gold in the system as well. It's mainly a copper moly system, but locally in certain phases of mineralization there is gold. So over the last sort of 12 to 18 months we've had a, an extensive program of, of resampling historical material to build out that database so that we can you know, bring gold into the uh, future resources. And so, yeah, in a number of cases in, in these open pits, we've got significant mineralization outside showing the potential for growth. And so then on the back of that PEA, it's all about exploration. And 95% of all the historical... Oh, sorry. How do I go back? All the historical drilling has been done in the mineral resource area and very little outside. So sort of over the last 12 to 18 months, we've collected various new data sets from um, high resolution spectral, um, geophysics, uh, mapping, etc. And we've now built out the, the structural framework. There's sort of three, com three or four components to this. So we've got basin and range tectonics. So here's the main range front fault. If you step off to the left, you've got 3,000 vertical meters of gravels. You step to the right and you're into the bedrock geology. And then we have two key structures that host the mineralization. In the west is what's known in the district as the Holy Joe Fault. It's a form of thrust, and that's the conduit that's brought in the porphyries and the breccias, uh, and where you know, the main mineral resource is hosted. We've got then the western structure here, which brings in all of these porphyries and breaches. And altogether, there's been over 300 breaches mapped at surface on the project, and that currently there's just 17 that make up the, the resource. There's also a, a series of um, perpendicular um, normal faults, and they sort of create like an egg box texture where blocks have been moved up or down faulted. Hence why we see uh, a block of breccias, no breccias, uh, and then a, another block of breccias with this differential zonation of the faulting. And then there's also a slight tilting in the regional tectonics as well, which results that we're in a higher structural level on the western structure. So we're seeing high level alteration as well as pyrite. And so we anticipate we would need to drill down two or 300 meters before hitting the the Chaka pyrite zone, and that's more likely to be then a, an underground target. Hence why we're doing all of our drilling along the Holy Joe Fault, where we've got copper exposed at the surface. And so we're, we're going to be drilling in three locations in, in short order. We, we've currently got one rig. We've got a second rig that's being mobilized to site. Um, we're drilling in, in this area here in American Eagle, above that porphyry mineralization. We made a new discovery down in Area 51, and we're going to be drilling up in this block called Rum, up there where we've got a lot of surface copper exposure. So turning to the American Eagle area, we, we've got permits um, approved, which are those um, cyan-colored triangles. You can see the breccias in dark gray black. Um, the little dots are the geochemistry, so you know very strong geochemical responses at surface. A lot of two and five percent uh, copper results there. And then, and then this is where we, we made a couple of new discoveries of high-grade breccias. Um, firstly, there's the banjo breccia, 270 meters at 0.64 percent copper, including 118 meters at, at just over a percent. Uh, and locally, some 2% intersections there as well. 
and then also the Prada breccia, which is, uh, you know, again, broad zones of, of mineralization, certainly above the cutoff grade for open pits. And we do see this zonation of pyrite near surface, grading down chocolate pyrite and then, and then into bornite. And as I say, we're busy drilling there, so watch this space for some more exciting results to come from, from this area. And so, you know, the, the vision is that above that American eagle porphyry, we're, we're defining this mineralization. So far, we've sort of built out a, what I call a skeleton framework of initial holes to, to understand geology, structure, alteration, mineralization. Now we've got that framework. It's about infill drilling so that we can then take that up to, up to resource level. And so the idea is we'd have a, you know, an open pit above that porphyry mineralization. I mentioned as well we made a discovery in the area 51. This is 800 meters outside of, of the current resource and along that same um, Holy Joe Fault. So again, the cluster of breccias at surface with significant copper mineralization that could be mined by open pits. You can see these breccia class then that are cemented by the, the Chaka Pyrite matrix. So our goal from this drilling is, is looking to add 30% more open pit inventory, so around about 50 million tons to, um, for the open pit. And then similarly, we've been doing the, the, the metallurgical work. So one of the, the items that we highlight or, or highlighted in the, in the PEA was there was a, one, a 190 micron grind size, but we had some data that suggested we could coarsen up that grind to plus 300 microns. And so we've done an extensive program of work, and we're now averaging 350 microns. So bringing a, a coarse grind component into the flow sheet, that really helps then to unlock the throughput. So going from 30 to 45,000 tons a day, and then corresponding 75,000 tons of copper. So that's what we're envisaging a, a future study to be on the back of this drilling and metallurgical work. And then we, and what we saw with that, um, metallurgical work and that increase in the ground side, there was no deterioration in the copper recoveries. This is a predominantly sulfide project. There's a thin veneer of, of oxide, about 20 million tons in the mine plan, but essentially it's, it's sulfide. So, you know, we're still getting 95% uh, copper recovery in that flotation. Um, we've also started to, you know, look at gold as well and seeing that that's deporting to the, to the copper con. It's a clean concentrate, no deleterious elements, and we, we're actually getting, um, it's an average of 32% copper in the, in the con. We've obviously, in conjunction with all of that exploration work, started the environmental and stakeholder engagement. So, for example, we've... You know, we've installed a weather station. We've been working with the regulators and the placement of piezometers in our deeper holes to start to build out the data for the geohydrological model. We've got flow meters in all of the drainage, uh, drilling various water wells, all the sampling, monitoring, etc. And then we've started the, the engagement with communities as well as Native American Indians. And, um, and we've had seven groups visit to site. And, and they form important groups when it comes to public participation. And so really the next steps are, so we've got the 10,000 meters of drilling from last year, the 20,000 meters that we're drilling now, we'll have a data cut off at the end of the year, so we'll have 30,000 meters of new drilling um, that will get wrapped up into a, a new mineral resource estimate as we go into 2025, and then that will form the backbone for a new PEA update as well as incorporating all of that metallurgical work and, and the gold with a vision that would go from the 30,000 ton a day to 45. And we expect to do that sort of, you know, come second half of next year. And then in the meantime, you know, we continue to drill and are excited about, you know, all the, the exploration opportunities we've got on the project. And I thank you for your attention. Thanks very much, Paul. Any, uh, any questions in the room? Hi, Paul. Hey, Ryan. On the breccia pipe, about yes. what, I don't know, right now, what sort of percentage do you all see that of the total tonnage, maybe? I'm just trying to get a sense there. So in, in the PA mine plan, we've got 127 million tons in the open pit, which is predominantly the, 
the Breccia pipes, okay. and then there's a sort of another 300 odd million in the underground in the porphyry. Okay. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay, Great. thanks very much, Paul. Okay, thanks, Mike. See ya.